Welcome to the Startup Grind. We are a global community of entrepreneurs. We are in around 200 countries. The uh, startup, startup Grind is coming out of Silicon Valley. It was established in 2010. And uh, the main idea or the main mission is to um, share success stories of local entrepreneurs and get you inspired and also network with each other. So you can definitely grab Yara after that and, and ask him all the important questions. Um, so there was a little, little introduction. My name is Marek Zamechnik. I'm also one of the founders uh, of 100 Ventures and this space. And uh, this is our already, I think, 20, yes, 21st session. So uh, we've been on the road. We all, sometimes we travel also to other spaces. So uh, please follow us. Uh, it's always interesting to, to get to know the, the local startup community. Uh, tonight, I will be interviewing Jaro Hrabko, who is uh, also a very good friend of mine. We actually we, we grew up together and we know each other from uh, high school, so I have a lot of interesting uh, <laughs> insights <laughs> I can tell, and uh, hopefully, hopefully we can share it tonight. Jaro uh, <laughs> uh, recently, well, recently, a couple of years ago, established Jedoles uh, SK, which is a, a successful e commerce um, starting off in Slovakia and Czech Republic and now growing into uh, other countries such as Germany. And um, he's he has seen some uh, some steady growth, so it's definitely an interesting story. Before we kick off with the first set of questions, I would like to thank our partners and sponsors, namely uh, Slovak Telecom and Decent Blockchain Company and startup from Slovakia, um, who we very much thank. So, um, guys, please uh, give it up for Yaro, and we'll start with the first set of questions. <laughs> Thank you for your introduction, Marek. Yeah, uh, it's nice to be with you here. Today. It's great. I, I um, it's it's kind of weird for me because um, we we literally sat next to each other for like four years in high school, and uh, it's kind of it's kind of great to see uh, the success you achieved and kind of you know to to hear to hear how you see the the world of startups. Um, we usually start with the background, and I know where you're from, but I mean maybe you can you can share with everybody else where you're from, where you grew up, and how how you. How you started? I mean, you don't have to start from the born period, but <laughs> like. <laughs> so I came from a small town uh, near Bratislava, Bezinok, and uh, actually uh, my, my parents uh, has their, their small business there. Uh, so that was, that was my first experience with, uh, with uh, like business, but it was really on, uh, small and local. And uh, yeah, and actually, uh, Pezinok is not very like entrepreneurial city, so I, I have no idea mm. what, what, uh, or no like. Well, like what, what what did your parents actually like do? Like they they sold some bicycles just <laughs> 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 to the local small small shop. They sold it to their their employee, and he's mm -hmm. still working there. You know? Okay. So, yeah. uh, so then you think that was kind of the first kind of touch of entrepreneurship? Did, did it have any influence on you? Yeah, actually, I really like to to sell bicycles there. When I was like twelve and or thirteen, I, I I sold my first first bicycles, and it was quite a like nice experience to like help people to choose what they want. So maybe it was like first thing, yeah, like. And it, and there was a touch when you were at high school, right? I remember your father was selling uh, the bikes on the the corner of the streets where you lived. Um, what what happened after high school? What was your journey after high school? Yeah, I, I, I was quite a hippie, hippie guy. <laughs> like that. I, I, I didn't know that I would like to do business. Uh, if I knew it back then, maybe I, I, I tried some, I, I would try some college, maybe uh, like business oriented. But I have no idea. I, I thought that I, I'm going to live in the forest or something like that. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, so, but but I, I felt in love back then, mm -hmm. and I, I realized that I'm like an old person, and I need to to do something. And I I was like like naturally maybe it was because our, my my parents like did business before. Naturally, I I wanted to to employ myself somehow. Mm -hmm. So I st I never think about like to be an employee or mm -hmm. I, I always wanted to do mm -hmm. something on my own. Mm -hmm. And so you were you went to college for a year, uh, half right? year, yeah, half year, um, and you usually hear these stories of like you know drop it out, dropping out of university, establishing Facebook, etc. What was the driver for you? What was the driver for you to to finish university and you thought okay this is not worth it? Uh, 
first thing was that I was forced to go to university mm-hmm. uh, by my family, and I, I, I tried to persist, but I was unable. <laughs> so they, they, they managed to force me to go there. Uh, so I, I, I didn't want to study. Mm-hmm. study. So, uh, and right after you finished the university, you went to establish your company or no no no, no. I, I started to do like real estate agent uh, because I wanted to make some money like, some quick money to, <laughs> to go f- <laughs> to see my girlfriend she was in Ecuador back then it was like <laughs> crazy story <laughs> yeah but uh, that, that was uh, the first like I, I made my entrepreneurial uh, license and I and then I like started to find what, what I would like to do mm-hmm. and yeah. uh, my, my, uh, like I, I realized that in the internet, there are a lot of opportunities that you. I realized that you don't need that much cash to start, uh, because I don't have any uh, any cash back then. And uh, actually, I faked my <laughs> tax tax like uh, my taxes in order to get mm-hmm. a loan. It was like a cr- crazy start. <laughs> okay, and the, the, what age was this? Was like I was twenty back then. You're twenty. Yeah, twenty. Okay, so finding yourself, you you were tr- you knew you want to work for yourself. What was the kind of the, the again the driver that you you wanted to do e-commerce and like we'll we'll get back to that but like how did you come to e-commerce why didn't you like try to build software or like try to sell hot dogs or like why why where did I, you see the potential as I said before I have no experience with business mm-hmm. so I, I I didn't understand like how I like I have no idea about business strategy or business models and so on. But, you know, buy and sell stuff is like a really, really easy and all <laughs> ancient business model. So I realized that I need uh, like to do something, to sell something or to make some money because I, I don't have any. Okay. So I, I decided that, yeah, let, let's, let's try to do like to establish a shop. I, I see so my friend in Pezinok here is also a shop and that inspired me a bit maybe as well. And uh, yeah, I, I don't have actually any like bigger vision. I just feel that I'm able to create something and I'm able to to build something, or mm-hmm. I would like to achieve something. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I, I don't have actually. I, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't know what actually it is. So I'll just jump in real quick. There's Slido behind me. Uh, I will leave around 10 to 15 minutes at the end to uh, to ask questions also from you. So if you just get in on slido.com and use the hashtag SUGBA, um, I'll be asking some questions out of there. So um, Okay, and that uh, kind of the transformation, and uh, did you actually feel like that, you know, you want to grow it to what you grew it into? Like, I mean, what, I mean, what was the idea? Just like you will be self-employed or like, did you have... Um, I'm looking for that, I mean, to be honest, like I'm looking for the... Um, the, the motivation of like, yeah, I and mean, because you grew it into what now we are three million plus euros revenue. Yeah, it was you know, lot, was it? that's 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 a, that's a lot, lot of money. Did you ever think like it was gonna grow to this stage? Uh, no, maybe some one part of me like I, I believe that I'm able to do something like extraordinary, but uh, another part of me like the, the uneducated part and like the part who uh, which doesn't know anything about business. Uh, uh, didn't know mm-hmm. what does it mean to to run this kind of company, you know. Right. And I believe that if you can imagine something, you can do it. So uh, if if you can, if you don't know what does it mean to have three million turnover and and do e-commerce, you know, that, uh, how the warehouse should look like, uh, how the processes should look like, what, what kind of people do you need in like, mm-hmm. you need in the business. Then, like it's it's hard to to know, like right. And then, uh, the question is, what were your first days? Like, you, you okay? Let's run this business. Let's do an e-commerce. Where is my office? What, what were the what were the first days? Yeah, it was in in uh, like uh, in my room in my girlfriend's room. <laughs> <laughs> not, not even my room. <laughs> and I, I I borrowed some money and I borrowed no land. Yeah. And uh, I, I bought some t-shirts. I, I like uh, found one friend who made made the logo and uh, uh, like a website for eight hundred euros, and I like, started. 
I found the product in the, in the holiday, and like it was a very quick process. I, I just like decided to go. And was it, you are very. I mean, your products are more like social responsibility. What is the connection between your hippie kind of world and uh, the the e-commerce um, theme or topic? Yeah, that was actually the the moment when I found the T-shirts. Mm -hmm. we, we we started to sell back then. It was in in the holiday and. Uh, they are like ecologically printed with water-based inks and uh, uh, like water, uh, and they're like hand dyes and so on. Uh, and and they have also animal printings on it. So that that was in you know, alignment with my like hippie nature, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so so I decided to start to sell it in Slovakia because I knew that I I, I have never seen them here. Mm -hmm. So it was good. Okay. So I think. So it was maybe yeah. a little bit an accident, you know. Mm -hmm. Also with the start, I mean, you, you have a you have a uh, very interesting name. Uh, in for those who don't speak Slovak, it's called Father Forest or Father Wood. Grandfather Grandf Forest. Oh, oh, grandfather. Sorry, Grandfather Forest. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how? <laughs> Yeah, uh, and you can be very open. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, I. That was actually the the part of me that, that believed that I am able to build something, uh, because I don't want to call the the brand like I don't know animal T-shirts that I don't. Know. Uh, I, I wanted to find some name uh, on which I can build something. Uh, so I I started the process of finding the name. I, I write down hundreds of names and no of them I, I liked. Mm -hmm. I com combine a lot of words together, and I don't know. <laughs> and and then we were in the in the like walk in the forest, and, and it was nine, nine October two thousand eleven, <laughs> like nine ten eleven. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, I I just like it just came to my mind the Daedalus, and I knew that yeah that's it. It was like you know I, I discovered it, discovered hmm. it. Just like it just came to your mind. Yeah. Okay. Um, but you know, it has this kind of really nice relation to 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 your um, uh, theme of of the eShop. Okay, let's move on. I mean, these were the, the first days. So you were at your um, girlfriend's uh, room working out uh, the business plans and everything. Uh, when did you feel you you had the kind of the first success? Like you you, you thought, okay, this is going to work out. This is going to be my living. Whew. Whew. The moment, like you, you must remember, like okay, it clicked. Yeah, <laughs> this is a very hard question. I don't know. Uh, maybe yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, yeah, or how about I, surroundings? What did your family think, think about this? Like your girlfriend actually and yeah, uh, actually my girlfriend uh, like shouted me that you should be t-shirts. What stupid idea! I was do something more like original or something like that. So she was studying business school, so maybe she, she has more insight than me. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, but most people ignored my efforts. Mm -hmm. and, like, my mom was supportive as, as, uh, every time. Mm -hmm. So, and so uh, did you have any co-founders or like it was a solo business? Yeah, I was alone back then. Yeah. And it was hard because I still need more and more money and I d didn't have it. So I have to borrow more and more in order to make it like alive. And then I found uh, an angel investor who helped me a lot because he... He gave me also some money to, to save my ass, and also he, he teach me, taught me how to uh, like finance business. What does it mean? Uh, like, what is the, the cost of capital and, and these kind of things? Mm -hmm. And that was quite a good uh, school for me. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so I, I was alone at, at the beginning, but then I, I started to work with them, with him. Mm -hmm. Would you say that you know uh, most of the in all the startup books and like entrepreneurship books, is like you have this kind of you know perfect combination of like designer, hacker, and like uh, entrepreneur, the business guy, and you are alone, and uh, you still kind of manage to to, to take it off. Um, I would be interested in kind of learning what fuck ups you had because you were alone, and like how did you manage to uh, to overcome this, like the the problems, the issues, and you know some people just quit it and uh, continued. I think this business is infinite chain of fuck ups. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you know, you still uh, don't know what to do, like exactly. So uh, the biggest one, like the the one that you remember, and you kind of. I, I remember 
maybe maybe the Christmas 2014 when we didn't have our our system prepared for for the larger volumes, and uh, we we haven't managed to deliver a lot of packages. And I back then I have just one employee, and I, I gave him like a holiday after like uh, the, the Christmas period, and I stayed alone in the office with 1,000 unanswered mails. And all the angry customers, I had to read it and answer it, and it was really painful. And back then, I decided that yeah, this is like uh, horrible, and we have to like make basic like like profound profound change, and set up processes in order to uh, to be more scalable. And I believe that every business has uh, has to do this kind of change in some point, like to set up some some. Like, Organizations and some processes in order to to grow, to be able to grow more. Mm -hmm. mm, what do you think? Maybe is the, that was like the fuck up. The, the like yeah. it was hundreds of unsatisfied yeah. customers. Yeah. And what do you think is was the was the again the driver of uh, being successful of scaling up? Uh, you put a lot of emphasis on Facebook uh, and these kind of channels, which I don't think that many uh, like e-commerce entrepreneurs use, they mostly focus on Google Ads, but you became quite successful on, on Facebook. I think even Facebook headquarters, no? They wrote an article about you, no? Or something like that. Or kind um, of like... Like success study. Yeah, a, a success story. Success uh, story. How to, how to sell through Facebook. So, uh, how did you, how did you, you know, figure out the, the, the key uh, to sell through Facebook and these, I mean, and you can also tell about other channels, like, like marketing strategy. Okay. <laughs> uh, I... Uh, I focused uh, mostly on Facebook since the beginning, and uh, because I, I felt that uh, this is the the way how to promote these kind of products, and I re I really feel the I, I felt the potential of, of Facebook because you know if you if you you are like if you have some experience with ads, ads manager of Facebook and if you saw the like the Evolvement, or yeah, evolvement. evolvement of, of their ads platform is, is just amazing what they did uh, since like the last six years. So I think we we choose the right channel, and we were very like effective in use the, the most recent uh, like formats of, of advertisement. And uh, also, I because of uh, the Facebook strategy, I found my colleague who is now marketing manager, and he was one of the, or he is one of the like biggest uh, part of our success, or he mm -hmm. contributed a lot to our success. So, uh, yeah. could you maybe share some insights, maybe for others like who who are doing some Facebook ads, or like what worked, or what maybe what is not working, uh, like not to do. Uh, it is changing, and now I don't have a lot of insights into because I, I, I found this this colleague, and he's he's running mar marketing like mm -hmm. uh, one hundred percent. I, I have very few uh, even competencies there. You know? Okay, <laughs> that's that's interesting. And then uh, maybe uh, jumping onto another topic uh, is I mean, how many employees you have at the moment? It's uh, it's around forty people, uh, 40 20, people 20 employees, and twenty part timers. It's a pretty sizable number. Um, how do you uh, how do you manage your company culture? Uh, your very you know sustainable products, etc. Does it uh, reflect in your company on the company culture? Yeah, we are not like perfectly aligned with our philosophy. I have to admit, um, uh, but we are working on it. Uh, but you know, if, if uh, we just sell just social responsible or ecological product, there are no like infrastructure uh, now in, in in this region. And there are very few suppliers who are able to produce like social responsible products and so on. Okay, so, but uh, like company culture, uh, I don't know. It's very natural. Na natural, you know. Uh, we we have a lot of freedom in the work. We have some values values as humanity, um, uh, satisfaction and, and growth. Like growth in the mean like business growth and in the mean like personal growth. Mm -hmm. I believe that we are uh, we can be like satisfied in our life. But just when we are learning and mm -hmm. educating ourselves and growing. So. How do you? I mean, then what do you look? What do you look in at a person when you hire that person? Like, like for is, example, is that important for you? I guess, but like, uh, what key attributes you look for? For, for example, first I, I start every interview by introducing our values, so I'm trying to see the interest in the eyes mm -hmm. of, of the person. Or, 
and uh, that's maybe the first thing, like th this kind of check. And then I, uh, I I'm looking for curi curiosity, and uh, also like uh, yeah, curiosity is very very important. And uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> You have probably more stages of interview, right? <laughs> you kind of figure it out on the way. Um, what do you, what do you currently what are you currently working on, Didilis? Um You entered uh, new markets. Maybe you can tell us a bit more um, how you um, how you scaled it from from outside of Czechoslovakia. How we scaled it? How you grew it into other? Okay. And what were the learnings of like going abroad? I think many. And now there's this kind of single market, right, as well, uh, initiative or, or something like that. Sorry, uh, there's this kind of initiative I recently read. Uh, the European Union wants to introduce, like, you know, proper single market also on the e-commerce. So with the VAT and everything, it should be much easier to sell across, across Europe. Um, are you being successful also abroad? And uh, did it bring you any, any more revenue to your company? Yeah, that was maybe one of the most important decisions uh, what we, we made back then. Uh, in 2014, we, we started to sell to Czech Republic. And, uh, and then we saw that it was successful. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we achieved our goals that we have for that year. And uh, so we decided that well, let's, let's do another market. Like, uh, we, we, we believe in ourselves because we are really great in, in doing like Facebook ads and Facebook marketing. So we, we use basically Facebook and our, like, I don't know, our, our website. Like we, we still improving the website. Like it's, it's an also infinite process of improving. Um, and uh, and we, we decided to, to go to another market. So we, we, we went in 2015, it was Austria and Hungary. Then in 2016, Germany and Romania. Mm -hmm. Now we are trying to enter Pol Poland and Italy. We are going to launch it these days, so we'll see if mm -hmm. we will be successful there. And and how, for example, I can imagine German is uh, in e-commerce, very competitive market. Yes. How is that? Like, uh, it, it's interesting. The ads there are very expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, the co the competition is really huge, but it's the like during the year is the most profitable country for us. Mm -hmm. uh, because we have a big margin there, a lot of, ma lot of margins, and even like un undelivered or un and then like trade or, or mm -hmm. you know like the rate of uh, orders we are able to like uh, successfully deliver in, in Germany is the biggest like conversion. You mean no, like from no, 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 no. Oh. okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And what okay, and then uh, other markets. Uh, I mean, like, can you tell us a story that didn't work in the, like Austria or like some other like, or everything is perfect? Uh, no, no, <laughs> no. Times everything is perfect. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Like. Yeah. Like. Okay. I mean. Anyways. I mean, you're actually just entering the the new new market, so I think we'll see we'll see down the road how that goes. Um, uh, how do you how do you plan uh, for the future? Uh, how do you decide uh, that you know we will enter these markets? Do you have any kind of uh, process inside, or how, how how do you do planning in the company? Actually, like actually, the planning for the uh, like what market we are going to enter, mm -hmm. we don't have some like process for that. Okay, so we just like we we decided to sell to this market because of proximity, mm -hmm. and because. Uh, uh, for example, we, we are able to hire ha Hungarian people easily because we are close to, to like Hungary, part of Slovakia. Mm -hmm. And uh, but we also saw, uh, like analyzed the, the cause of advertisement there and so on. For example, Romania was the like the must-go country because uh, e-commerce there is growing very quickly. It's, it's still like there are huge potential for growth and so on. So yeah. And, and, you know, if, if we will be able to be successful in Germany, for example, then we have like, uh, yeah. we, we, we wanted to try what we can do there. And, but it, it's just 10% of our turnover now, Germany, for example. So we are looking for the ways how to be more effective in these countries, like the, mm -hmm. the Western countries. It's completely different. They are, they, they, they are not, for example, Czech, Czech people are very, they are going uh, 
they're listening to like low, low, low prices and, and mm -hmm. so on. But in Germany, it's, it's different, and we still don't know what to like how, how to market ourselves there. And, uh, so your best market is Czech. Yeah, so it's, it's basically forty percent of our turnover. Oh, really? Okay. And eighty-five percent we are exporting from Slovakia. Mm -hmm. When you're entering, for example, a new market, what is the competitive advantage you think you have against, I mean, compared to other players? Like, now we are quite uh, in, the, in the product, we have quite a unique product portfolio. It's maybe our, also our competitive advantage mm -hmm. because we have like a really unique mix of products. And uh, when we uh, enter a new market, so we are already one of the biggest players in the Europe in the like current product category so uh, so we we are able to have like la quite large margin because we have uh, big, uh, large backgrinding power uh, with, with uh, our suppliers, suppliers. so uh, uh, so for example this the margins is, is one thing that, uh, and also we, we have a, a quite a big stock of, of uh, t-shirts and uh, like all the products so we are able to provide like, this unique portfolio quite mm -hmm. quickly to the customers mm -hmm. so and then our marketing know-how I think that our marketing team is very like, uh, is working very good and there are eight people who is working al almost full-time on it mm -hmm. so so yeah, that's it. Maybe could you tell us about your like kind of like supply chain structure or like uh, where where do, where does the where do the t-shirts come from and <laughs> how, how does that work? Like, yeah, so like we have uh, basically the most of our, most of our suppliers are from Europe, mm -hmm. so we we don't need to deal with all the bureaucracy when you're importing from Asia. But we have our, also also these kind of suppliers and uh, like. That was very, maybe that was maybe a lack at the beginning because our key supplier has really great processes, really great stock, and we are able to sell something what we don't stock, like what we didn't stock like on our shelves. So that was maybe also like big uh, thing what helped us helped us uh, at the beginning, mm -hmm. and we we still use this uh, this kind of, this uh, way of distribution because we have. Uh, more than 20,000 of SKUs mm -hmm. and if we have everything on stock we have to have I don't know 1 million on stock and it's like impossible yeah. and like this is unreal so uh, yeah mm -hmm. well I actually read the the, uh, the numbers from a couple of years ago and you grew from now you have 3 million again 3 million euros revenue before you had one point something or two, two million? Was one million, it, it was one, one million. So it was a, you know, triple, three, three X in a year. How do you manage the scale? You know, you probably had to um, uh, run, you know, employ more people. Uh, did you struggle with this? Or like, and probably next year you're gonna have even uh, higher revenue. How do you, how do you manage the, the scaling of the business? It's also a very important part of a growing business, so. Uh, so basically we, we focused on creating like processes, a lot of processes, mm -hmm. because you know, when you you're doing something new, you have to create some like new way how to do it. And when, when but business is very repetitive. So if you create a process from it, when when you like create it, then you you don't need to think again when you are going to do it again. And uh, you can like save your creative energy for something else. You know. Mm -hmm. So the, the process thinking was one of the key how we can like scale and then uh, as I mentioned before that in 2015 uh, I, I decided to invest into uh, like logistics and set up like systems and uh, scan everything with terminals and these, these things mm -hmm. and that was another another thing mm -hmm. and uh, before actually I jump into maybe your kind of personal life and uh, learning a bit about um, how you how you manage uh, things um, what so far what are the three kind of the accomplishments you feel like like well not even three like what are the accomplishments you if you feel like the most proud of as a company and that you know this will um, be the your identity I don't know how to call it but like yeah so like basically the the fact that I I, I have the company 
uh, where 40 people are working mm -hmm. and I, I, I think that they are quite like uh, satisfied there mm -hmm. uh, it's maybe the biggest accomplishment for me and then every single Christmas are a huge um, huge um, challenge for us mm -hmm. because uh, our our like distribution of turnover during the year is that we, we make 45 to 50 percent uh, of turnover during the first nine months and then 55 50 to 55 percent during the last three months okay and uh, last year it was like 33 percent during the December so we have to like mm -hmm. uh, you know you have like the business is completely different during that la these mm -hmm. last three months of the of the year and you have to prepare everything for the Christmas so and and you never know what that will be like hiring more people for that time and yeah you know, and, and plan yeah. a lot of th and, and as we grew um, for example our key suppliers we, we grew to his like uh, size you know so we have to plan more accurate the the stock flow because mm -hmm. uh, it's quite a big chunk of their like total volumes they they're they're doing you know so it's like a huge project every year Mm -hmm. And so every single Christmas, are uh, when we when we uh, do it like, like successfully, it, it's success. Uh, what, what did your suppliers tell you that you are basically there at the time, basically like the the only uh, buyer, right? Because you're the largest. Uh, I mean, I remember you told me like a year ago that uh, the supplier was asking you how 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 are you selling these things? You know, you were surprised as well. So like, yeah. you, can, you can tell us a bit more about this, like how, how they see it. They're based in England, I think. Right? Yes, yes, yes. So. Now they want, want us to buy them. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see how, how this will, will, like, what the story will be, because they're, you know, 55 and more years old okay. managers, and they want to like, transition the business to somebody's perspective, you know, and mm -hmm. they see it in us. So, uh, yeah, and like... They they are basically wholesalers mm -hmm. and uh, and our our like selling strategy strategy is B two C, so it's completely different business I think. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was hard to explain them how we made, <laughs> <laughs> and even if if, we, if I, I explained to them they 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 decided not to go our way because mm -hmm. you know it's like, and especially in UK you have much large cost that's maybe our. It's maybe our competitive advantage, uh, like geographical competitive advantage, mm -hmm. because you have cheap labor here, cheap, um, uh, you know, like buildings and mm -hmm. these things. Mm -hmm. Offices, rent. Okay. Um, now we're quite interested in uh, you. How do you see? How do you see the the, the next things? Uh, you personally, I mean, uh, do you think this will be the the project for the rest of your life, or um, what's what's next, or yeah. is there next? Uh, like personally, what's next or in the business? Oh, we can say both, but I would be also interested in personal. Yeah. Um, so I can tell it uh, today because uh, it, it's now like it 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 was uh, it have been announced in in the in the business. So, uh, so I decided to quit as a CEO. So uh, this is like big change I, I'm going to make in personal and also business life. Uh, I realized that my skill set is not very like um, suitable for the executive function. Mm -hmm. I'm more like creative person and more maybe starter of something, you know, mm -hmm. like activator. Mm -hmm. So uh, and it's not something I just like realized that oh, it, it is like a longer process, like inside process, and I, mm -hmm. I rethink it from every every angle. And I decided to uh, to find somebody who will mm -hmm. like uh, who will be CEO. And but I would like to stay in the business as strategist and mm -hmm. uh, uh, also the face of the business, you know, and also uh, and like support everybody and everything in order to. And I would like to put more energy in like next expansion plan mm -hmm. and uh, strategy, not uh, like daily operations because I'm not very good at it, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. And w what other projects would you be interested in potentially? Like, what is the, what is the things maybe you just kind of, you wake up and it's like, this is a good, this is a thing I would like to do. Like, before I will like transit or they lost to another CEO or I will like uh, set up everything, I, I would never start with something else. 
but I really, really, ex I'm really excited about the, the current, like, current uh, situation in the world. Technology is progressing so quickly, and there are so, so much amazing opportunities, and so much like amazing business models. For example, I really like business models as uh, like economy of sharing, mm -hmm. you know, uh, like Uber and these things. And but also I'm quite uh, excited about artificial intelligence and like entrance to the augmented era. You know, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. also like amazing what what we will be able to like thanks to technology and uh, artificial intelligence. I think the combination of this uh, mm -hmm. like, computational power and, and like, software development, what we are able to create in the future, it's like mm -hmm. so maybe I will go to something. Do you, I mean, do you think it's AI is gonna have some impact on e-commerce? I guess it I, will. And are you seeing anything uh, already? Definitely, yeah. definitely a huge impact. For example, Auto Group in, in Germany, they started to use AI for ordering the goods, and they made like amazing results with that. Mm -hmm. They improved the effectivity of, of effectiveness of business like, significantly. Mm -hmm. I, I've read some article about it. So, uh, yeah. I think definitely. I think that maybe one day AI will like uh, I don't know, like online will be changing the the website according to the need of the person. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think that the, the 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 future is very fluid. Like will be very fluid. Like yeah. in the middle also of usability of, mm -hmm. of like e-commerce or something like that. Mm -hmm. So to to be a software company. Also for e-commerce, it's like very cru crucial. Mm -hmm. Do you see maybe some other technologies that uh, would impact uh, e-commerce? I don't know, maybe the augmented reali re reali reality. <laughs> reality. <laughs> like, the like the biggest disruptors maybe in e-commerce. I mean, AI. You know, in the cars, it's more like self-driving cars. Yes, that will be another like, because so uh, self-doing logistics or self-driving cars will be another thing which will like change, uh, uh, especially logistics significantly because you, you will have I don't know ten times lower like uh, cost for delivering the package packages because you you don't need a human. You know? mm -hmm. So that will be also uh, definitely very. Like, Are you preparing for this era already? I think that in Slovakia we are maybe five years like <laughs> back. Yeah. So, but, uh, but you're doing, I mean, you're a pan-European business, right? So you need yeah, to be competitive it's, also. In like, we started to use, like our, uh, we are going to use some AI in, in our processes. Uh, we are using it uh, thanks to Expona. They, they are doing the AI and we implemented them to our, our systems. But uh, we, we have a plan for like uh, we, we would like to start with some predictions. We have some plan for the, for that. Uh, that have to predict the the what, what we will sell like, right. based uh, based on like some artificial intelligence. Uh, before I jump actually to the to the questions, and I think I will also leave some um, so maybe open mic if anybody wants to ask from the audience. But um, uh, it's kind of wrapping up the whole discussion. Uh, you are you've been. Uh, on the startup market, like, you know, business market since 2011. Uh, how do you see the local community? How do you see, I mean, do, you, do, you, do you see any changes? Do you see the perspective or like, okay, not so really? How, how do you see the local market? I've never considered it as a startup. It's kind of more like a traditional business, uh, more than, than startup. But uh, like the environment here changed like significantly back, uh, since since 2011. Uh, I wanted to find some co-working back then. And there was no like no co-working like like no. <laughs> so, and now you have I don't know seven, ten in, in Bratislava, and uh, like places where people share their thoughts, thoughts, and like when they can meet some somebody int interesting are more like there are more and more these kind of places so uh, I think that uh, nowadays are like th this changed like really really significantly mm -hmm. since then right <laughs> and <laughs> it's pretty I mean um, for, for, for me it's really nice to see that um, I see a lot of also Slovaks coming back 
uh, to Slovakia and trying to, you know, Exponent is actually a very nice example of this, you know, bunch of uh, great people uh, came back to work for some great companies and hopefully we'll see um, some uh, inspiring companies coming up again. Um, I usually have these last questions in my uh, in my discussion. I always ask for what is your kind of role model in the company world, like, um, or like even entrepreneurs who are inspiring people in your life, in business. Yeah, uh, as I have the the chance to to try like really the, the ancient business model like bank and stuff. <laughs> uh, I, I really love the scalable business models. Uh, and, and the possibilities the entrepreneurs ha have today, today, and uh, so uh, I really like the business models. Like I mentioned, the uh, sharing economy business models are, are software companies, you know, because you can like create some software which helping people, mm -hmm. uh, and, and like uh, you can also bootstra bootstrapping. You, you mm -hmm. don't even you don't need like millions for, for the beginning and you know mm -hmm. uh, like not necessarily and uh, but you asked about people so I'll ask yeah <laughs> <laughs> boring <laughs> so, okay okay Microsoft Apple are you Microsoft uh, guy more Apple, or Apple, Apple guy Apple, Apple. Definitely. Okay, so more like kind of you know trying to to, to be visionary and okay. yeah yes. but you know SpaceX I, I feel you there okay uh, and the last question I mean this is a uh, international community of entrepreneurs and we always share this uh, around the world, this video, so what is kind of the general message you would like to leave and um, to, to give us like a kind of food for thought, as we say? Okay, <laughs> so I think that uh, one could uh, ne never give up, so that's maybe the, the, the first thing. Let's, let's try it till, till we die, <laughs> to, to, to improve ourselves, our businesses and so on, uh, let's educate ourselves, because without education we can like Imagine what what is possible to do, and dream big. <laughs> and I, I think we have a couple of questions here, and I need to move like this. Um, let's start with the, the, the first one. Uh, how significant to your success were the first people you hired, uh, and how did you choose them? It's maybe like that. Yeah, like it was. As I said, uh, I found my colleague who is marketing manager and he contributed a lot to our success. So it was really crucial to our success to find him because I think that the proactive person who are able to develop some part of, of business and like uh, work alone on it and, and improve it mm -hmm. and never st stop improving is is crucial for the success because one one person alone can do like anything. Like mm -hmm. you can do something but not something big. How did you know that that's the that's the right kind of the you know, did I mean the, the guy who helped you to build the marketing, did you have a feeling or that this is the right person? It was also a lack. Uh because we he he's really he's very really smart actually. And he, I, I met him when he, he was 17, and he has three Facebook pages with 500,000 uh, like fans, mm -hmm. okay? Because uh, back then Facebook uh, promoted the pages alone, like without any, any uh, needs to pay. And he, he saw it when he was like 15, and he based the, like the, the, the Facebook page law, like laugh. Mm -hmm. uh, and 300,000 people like, you know. And he started to do marketing there, and that's how I met him. And I, I, I saw, I, I saw uh, when we created some campaign on his, web, on his Facebook page, because that's how I made marketing back then, I saw that he's thinking differently, that he's very proactive and he's improving my ideas. And other owners of this kind of website was just like, okay, I will, like, Put it there. But he he thought about it, and then I, I met him occasionally, and I decided to hire him because I knew that he he has something. Mm -hmm. He has something to say. Okay. So, uh, do you have offices in other countries, or do you only operate in Slovakia? Out of uh, Slovakia. 
No, we operate from Slovakia. Uh, we have some people, some some like persons, uh, just, uh, who, who are like working there, but no no offices. Uh, we have uh, we, uh, warehouse in Tezinok and uh, all like financials and s- customer support and so on. We have in Tezinok and in Bratislava we have our marketing team. So mm-hmm. yeah. Any plans of maybe going out of Slovakia or maybe in the future? We still uh, we, we still don't have. Like brick and mortar shop, mm-hmm. and uh, it, I think that it's uh, it's, uh, it, it, it's it was not a good decision to to like not not establish it. But I remember something. Yeah, I, you had something. Uh, no, in Pezino. No, it was it was no. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> but he <it> tried. <laughs> okay. Uh, cool. Yeah, but uh, I think that for the e-commerce side as, as we are, it's necessary. It's mm-hmm. uh, necessary to have some like uh, well, fine exposure. Yes, yes, so, yes. Uh, because people I, still more than ninety percent of retail in Slovakia is, is made like in brick and mortar shops. So mm-hmm. we're still playing with ten percent or or less. So I think that it's really important to have some brick and mortar shop mm-hmm. for e-commerce. So uh, and also that that's also my answer to uh, like the expansion to abroad. I think that. Prague and I don't know Bucharest and these this, uh, cities is uh, like we will have there opportunities I, I there, right? Yeah. Um, okay, interesting question. Uh, feel free to answer or not. How big a share of your company do you own? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. When did you hire first employee? I think that's uh, quite related to the first question we had. But do you remember? Like, was it right after? Your, uh, it was before the company started to to earn some money <laughs> because I'm quite a lazy person, you know, and I <laughs> I decided to hire a part timer, and she's actually still in the business, and she actually made a, a huge contribution as well. Mm-hmm. She's not, she's now like uh, developing as an analyst, but she was back then just like the high high school uh, adult student. or something. Uh, okay, and she's, she and she's still at your yeah, company. Yeah. And now she's like doing a pretty good job there. Mm-hmm. She's studying ETA management, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, you said your main marketing channel is was Facebook. What about Instagram? Do you focus on this platform at some point? Or did you focus on this platform? Yeah, we started to work with Instagram uh, like this year, like more intensively. More intensively. So uh, now we have some 7,000 followers there and it's growing quite quickly. And we are also using their their ads, uh, and but I don't know how effective for us it is, mm-hmm. to be honest. Uh, do you think that it would be harder for you to start your own business, or you wouldn't start at all if you wouldn't have business partners? So would you go in again alone to a, to a business or? Parents. Sorry, there. Oh, parents. We have business oh, parents. This ah. is a very hypothetical question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I don't know. Like uh, if if I I lost everything, for example, if that was going to bankrupt, I would uh, start another business now. But I don't know. This is a really like hypothetical. Uh, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go on. Um, do you have different prices in other countries, for example, Germany versus Slovakia? Yes, yes. We have uh, our our products are more expensive in Germany than than in Eastern. Our you know, how uh, you know how is that on the, perceived in one market? Then, I mean, you could you could you couldn't you in Germany order it from the Slovak shop? No, I think that they they. Don't have any idea that we have Slovak inside, and we don't have these like flags on the like <laughs> website, so so yeah. they they don't don't know that we okay. have another e shop. So how much different the prices are? Can I ask? It's not very much. I think ten percent. Ten percent. But yeah, you still ship it from Slovakia, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, what is your best selling product? Uh, does it differ throughout the countries where you're actively selling? <laughs> it's 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 also differ a lot uh, like in the 
it, it depends on season, like, or in the mean of turnover and the mean of quality, the quantity, mm -hmm. you know, because for example, some socks, you can sell, I don't know, hundreds of socks, but it, it makes like small chunk of turnover, but it will be the best selling product. But mm -hmm. another t-shirt we sell, I don't know, 20 pieces and... Okay, so on which product you make the most money? Maybe let's put it this way. Like, uh, let, let's take it like the product group. So still the t-shirts, the you started. Uh, the mountain t-shirts, mm -hmm. it's the, the brand we are the biggest reseller in <laughs> Europe. Uh, it still make for us 40 plus percent mm -hmm. of turnover. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it was 95 uh, in the beginning of 2016, so mm -hmm. we made a huge change in the last two years. Diversifying products. Uh, yeah. Okay, you said selling into Western European countries was different. Uh, could you say more about that? So, for example, we uh, yeah. maybe like the marketing channels. Like, is it uh, harder to sell in like Germany we, we through Facebook? Not, or we, we still do not customize our marketing a lot uh, because we don't have time for it. Still, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we we uh, we grew quite quickly and we just like copy paste what we do in Slovakia basically you know we, we create one campaign for every country and it's not very customized so this is how we work today but that's uh, like another strategic de decision for the next year that we would like to do like more specific marketing for mm -hmm. uh, other countries because uh, now it is really like generic for every country is, is the same and it's not working uh, like, like for, exam for example per capita we are much more effective in Czech Republic than in, Ge uh, in Germany yeah. and if we are that effective in Germany we have we are like 10, ten times bigger than mm -hmm. we are now so you know uh, uh, to localize it more probably uh, to, to like weeks. know better the customers yeah. the specific uh, the, the specific <laughs> For example, Germany and Austria, that's the, our Western markets, are typical that they don't want to pay uh, for the products before they, they receive it. Uh, and uh, for example, we started to provide this service for them in Austria, and we ended up with uh, thousands of un unpaid uh, orders. So mm -hmm. we decided to stop it. And now uh, we, uh, we implemented the Klarna, it's the, the one company who is providing uh, like th this service for, for like that they cover the cost if they don't pay for mm -hmm. you you know that you implement it to your basket and uh, or your, your like payment process mm -hmm. and they can choose it as an option as a payment option and you deliver it to them without payment and they pay you and they mm -hmm. then like deal mm -hmm. with the customer mm -hmm. uh, because okay. it's like it's quite uh, hard to take money from them. Right. Okay, so that is, for, for example, the spec specific about okay. custom geometries. So still a lot of learnings, actually. So, a last question. Uh, <laughs> do you have a successor for the CEO position? If not, where to send the CV? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can send it to me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, my email is... Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but but you already have uh, somebody who will take over the position of CEO? No, no, we don't have no. It's just like decision, and uh, I, I have like my internal deadline is eight months from now, so till June uh, 2018, I would like to have it like solved. Uh, so I think that we, we are facing quite like big opportunities and big challenges and. Uh, I'm really looking forward to work with somebody who will help us with it. So the email is Yaro? Uh, it's uh, J-A-R-O. <laughs> Yaro? Yaro. <laughs> uh, okay, I think that's it. So guys, thank you very much. Uh, please feel free to stay around to definitely talk to J-A-R-O. <laughs> Uh, he's definitely a funny guy, he's, he's uh, very much help, um, uh, willing to help out, so if you have questions, just grab him at the, the beer session. So, thank you very much, let's give it up for Yaro.